Tonight we continue our series of interviews with candidates for city council in District 4. The district mainly includes parts of Dorchester and Mattapan, and the preliminary election will take place next Tuesday, September 8th. We'd like to welcome one of the candidates, the incumbent running for re-election, Charles Yancey. Uh, thank you very much for being with us. Well, Chris, thank you so much for having us on your program. I think it's very important that the public realize that there is a very significant election taking place in the city of Boston next Tuesday, September 8th. So I'm here to plead with your viewers to go to the polls, whoever they want to vote for. Of course, I'm asking that they vote for Charles Yancey for District 4, but whoever they support, I think it's very important that uh, the people of Boston make their presence felt. And incidentally, uh, District 4 has changed significantly over the years, and today it includes only a relatively small portion of Mattapan, half of Dorchester, a precinct in Rosendale, and another precinct in Jamaica Plain. Uh, so I want to make sure that Rosendale and JP comes out as well. Uh, you've been on the council for 32 years now? Is well, we've, you... we've been able to accomplish quite a few things over the last few uh, Well, let's few concentrate years. about this last, last couple <laughs> of years here. Uh, what, what stands out? You know, uh, we're really institutionalizing a process of uh, accountability in city government with the Post Audit and Oversight Committee that I actually established uh, uh, during my first term on the city council, uh, looking at how the city is spending uh, the public's dollars, uh, how well we're doing in terms of diversity, in terms of employment and contracting, and quite frankly, how faithful are we uh, to the budget that was passed. Uh, we are also, as you know, uh, considering requiring our police officers to wear body cameras to help uh, with community relations and clarifying those interactions which sometimes are, are not very pleasant, uh, but we've seen over the country uh, on occasion, our police officers may abuse their authority, and I, I believe it's important to have a video record of those interactions. So we've had, we had a very successful hearing on, on body camps. Uh, hopefully, my colleagues will uh, support it. I'm asking uh, Councilor Flaherty, who chairs the, post, uh, who chairs the Committee on Government Operations, uh, to bring that matter forward as quickly as possible. Of course, we're willing to negotiate with the administration on it, but it is important. I will be submitting some new legislation, however, and pushing for a hearing concerning civilian review boards so that if a resident has a complaint about uh, how he or she is being treated by a police officer, we can have a, an objective system of accountability through an independent civilian review board. Uh, I'm looking forward to implementing that. We, we've re year. referred the uh, new appointees to this board uh, from the mayor, uh, the Ombudsman Board, whatever it's actually called, uh, saying that it needs to be more robust and, and more independent of the, the police hierarchy. Um, what else do you think needs to be done? <laughs> well, I think the, that particular board is useful for internal complaints, complaints about police officers against another police officer. But it's uh, really very ineffective in terms of uh, complaints by the public, uh, and I believe that uh, we should institute a system that goes beyond the internal affairs division or the co-op, but a system where you could actually bring your complaint uh, about the inter your interaction with a police officer in a fairly uh, transparent way where we're not depending upon the police to police themselves. So we have a lot of work to do. Uh, for example, uh, the co-op uh, does not have the ability to issue a subpoena and to require testimony on the part of our police officers. And without that, it's, it's difficult to conduct a fair and balanced investigation. I, I, I know there are many people out there who agree with that position, and, and we've heard this for many years. And, and I guess the question is, you know, you've probably believed this yourself for, for many years. I mean, what's the missing link here to, to, to just saying something like that and, and getting more people to make it happen? Well, we have to recognize that we have uh, you know, very influential and powerful uh, unions in the city of Boston, particularly the Boston Police Patrolman Association. And that's why uh, when I proposed this, one of the first organizations I contacted was the Patrolman Association to get their, their feedback because it should not be viewed as being punitive towards the police. Uh, but we give our police officers a tremendous amount of discretion and we equip them with 
deadly force. Uh, so we want to be very careful uh, to ensure that we have a system of checks and balances on the use of uh, deadly force, uh, but also uh, the public should know that uh, our police officers, our human beings, they make mistakes, uh, but they should also be supported by the public. But when those incidents take place where an officer goes beyond his or her authority, they have to be held accountable. Talk about the schools. Uh, for a long time, you've been trying to get that Mattapan High School built. We do have high schools that are uh, badly in need of upgrading, if not replacement. And at the same time, we've got thousands of uh, surplus seats in the school system. Well, we have to be very careful about determining what's a high school seat. Uh, many seats that are defined as high school seats are Or actually, anywhere in this, at all levels, actually. At all yeah. levels, yes. But uh, my focus, as you know, has been on ensuring that our children who attend the Boston Public High Schools have facilities so that they can compete with children from suburban areas, uh, which have brand new state-of-the-art facilities. And we haven't built a high school in Boston since 1979. So even the existing stock of high school seats are uh, insufficient. But add to that with, uh, the fact that we have upwards of 5,000 Boston Public High School students attending classes in substandard facilities, elementary school buildings, storefronts, and uh, very talented students at the Boston Arts Academy attend their classes in a building that was condemned, that used to be used as a warehouse for the post office. And we can do better in 2015, especially in light of the fact that we had land set aside in a very bucolic environment at the Boston State Hospital site, located in Mattapan, but will serve all the students of the city of Boston. That's going to become a great destination for our high school students once we get it built. So I'm calling upon the mayor to join the nine members of the Boston City Council who just uh, a few months ago approved uh, the funding for a new high school at that site on the first reading. Uh, so we just need Marty Walsh to come on board and make that happen while we still have that land available. So what about the raise for the council? Uh, we go along with the, the mayor's figure? Uh, do you need Bill Linehan's figure or, or the advisory board's figure? Yeah, it's an it's a issue that we've spent far too much time discussing. I'd rather focus on issues impacting our children and, and safety in the now, wait, streets. Now, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. You, you, just, just answer the question here. <laughs> which, which figure would you go along with? Well, I think, you know, the city council hasn't received a raise, I, I believe, about... Eight years. Ten, well, 2006, I believe, was the last time, so nine or ten years. It would not take effect until 2016. And there are more than 3,000 uh, employees in city government earning much more than the city council to make. So I think the compensation issue is a very difficult, complicated one, always controversial. I believe that if the council votes a one penny raise, it will raise the same stink that it's raising now. So I'll see what, what's going to come before me uh, on Wednesday or whenever the mayor is brought up to a vote. Thank you very much for being with us. Well, it's always a pleasure. And remember, the purpose for this interview is to remind people that next Tuesday, September 8th, is Election Day, and I'm asking the people who've been so supportive of me uh, over the last uh, few years where we've, we've built a police station, two community centers, and a state-of-the-art library to serve the people of Boston. I'm asking for their support so we can continue to fight to improve our school facilities and make sure city government uh, is accountable to the public. Thank